Uh, welcome back to my build of the stagecoach. Um, and this time when we are working on just the brake systems, I went ahead and glued the axle and this piece onto the frame, coated it with Danish oil and polyurethane. So it's ready to go. Did the same thing with the actual brakes we built previously. And these two pieces here, they're the actual um, control rods for the brakes. These are just two pieces of wood as described, tip notched, some holes drilled in it, a little word of shortcut here for doing the 45 on the tip. The bracket that holds the brakes in place has a 45 on the tip and just about the same width so you can stick it on top and get your uh, angles there right. So that's all made, these can be pinned together. I want to, let me see, but I want to do that in a minute. I want to do this first, where I'm beating out these two brackets. So in step 15, is it? We have these brackets here to bend, they're marked number 48. And they're just brackets that go underneath here. Three of them that hold the brake assembly in place. And it's just a simple piece of brass bent around to form a bracket to keep it from falling on the floor essentially. To get them you start out with just the brass pre-cut brass rod. And then what I did is I took it on the drawing or the picture and marked off a spot right here and right here that are the length of these tabs and then mark a spot inside just with a knife or a scribe that is the thickness of the actual break so that when it goes on it's about the thickness of the wood and the bend it I was just using my uh, pliers here for bending photo etch get a nice 90 Nice 90 on the other section. Else you've been in the right order. I did this one backwards. And over here, same thing. 90 on my mark I made. And another 90. And that gives me a nice bracket. Do the same thing on the other one. Now these can be blackened and put in place. Next thing is you have a rod to make right here, 120 millimeters long, and there's a hole 16 millimeters from the end and then 28 millimeters from the first one a one millimeter diameter hole. So what I do is I filed a couple of flats on the rod. I'll just take it so I can start my drill and I'll just drill it out with the Dremel a couple of one millimeter holes and call that good. Also have some other parts here. I have the little bracket to hold the rod in place. Hard to see. These are pre-made. I have another couple pieces that are the guides for the brake to go back and forth on. Those will be blackened along with those and this rod once you get the holes drilled but until I do that I can't get any more on those but in the meantime I'm going to start putting this wood onto this piece so I have my holes drilled in the end I have a hole one hole on either side drilled here this, is this side to put these things on so I can come on. I don't want these nails to full length. I don't want them sticking through the other side. So I'll cut a piece off of them. And then I can go ahead. Uh, get some different glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. That I have the two holes in it's this side. 
Um, front. I never have too many tools for doing this. Pop that through. And this one, make sure you go in the right direction. These should point forward, the shoes should point back. And go ahead and pop it in. Your hole should be small enough that the nail fits tight. And then come back wherever I do with the other one. There it is. Okay, go ahead and get this other one in place. Same thing. Two holes in one end. Take my nail. Cut off the end so I don't want to go all the way through. And get it in place. Now, these things should be perpendicular to the actual brake, so I can come on like that. I only drilled one hole previously so in the main piece of wood, so now I can come and do the second one. Now a little off center on it. get the second nail in if I can grab it Oh shoot, there it is. My second hole's off center from this piece on this piece of wood, but it's facing down. And while it bugs me, I'm not gonna make a new piece of wood for this. And then do the same thing on this other one. And if everything comes out right, then these two will be parallel with each other. But there will be a little bit of wiggle room with them just because of how you're putting them together. And then if you want, you're not going to just press the nails, you can actually put a piece of glue underneath or on the nails themselves to hold them in. That's why I have super glue. To hold everything together, I think I'm just going to trust it like this because these nails go in pretty tight. like that. So this piece will end up we're going to bottom the frame. Something like that. With these three brackets over the top. So I'm going to go ahead and blacken my brass now. And then come back after that's done and put these brackets here in place. Also drill the holes in here off camera with the Dremel. You don't want to see me noisy Dremel drilling that. And once that's done, we can get this, figure out where this goes in the front. 
So you show yourself the 24 millimeters back from the front. This will be on. Looks like the top side of it, 24 millimeters back from here. I'm not going to trust that measurement. I'm going to put the wheels on the back, figure out where the brake goes, and then figure out where these go. They'll probably be close to 24 millimeters, but it might be a little bit forward or back of that. But like I said, I'm going to trust wheel to brake spacing to figure out this measurement, not just the plans. So like I said, I'm going to black on the brass and drill those holes and be back. Okay, so now that we have these parts nailed in place, we have my bar, I drilled the holes in, I went ahead and read ahead and cut the pieces for the hooks that engage with these two bars and soldered them onto here. Now this piece needs to go into here, but I need to get some hooks, some brackets here. I went ahead and filed down into the frame a little bit because the brackets that hold this in place aren't deep enough. They're only go halfway over the bar. So I made it to go out so that the bar sets into the wood frame a little bit so that the brackets can hold it all the way down. Um, it's a little weird here because it's talking about putting those brackets in place. Then you evidently take them back off so that you can bend up the handle and make that. So I think we need to skip ahead and make this handle before mounting this bar to the chassis. In the meantime, we're, I, we can almost go ahead and put this in place, but we have to make sure we have our alignment correct. So I guess we have to put this handle in first. So I'll go ahead and make the handle up. We've got to cut a piece of wood here with a piece of dowel. So it's a square piece of wood, a piece of dowel put on the end. And I'm not sure they're talking about the 0.8 diameter here. I'm assuming there's a pin in here, so I'll have to double check that. You know, I'm going to get this cut and this cut. Number 24. It says 4 is what? Make an eighth millimeter hole to insert a 10 millimeter nail. First cutting of the head. Okay, so it is a pin. It's a nail that's been cut off. The head's cut off. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get this cut, get the nail, and get this cut. Two clamps. Here we go. Bend the bar. This thing. Two clamps. And put it together. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get the parts cut and come back. Okay, so I'll go ahead and glue these together. A little nail in between these two to shape to stiffen them. Still need sanded and painted, obviously. I have my metal cut out for my brackets to hold the handle in place. These need to be bent to go around the whole thing. To do that, I can just use my little pliers here. First bend I want to be about halfway. Well, yeah, halfway, and then come back. Is it laying on here? I can figure out where to do the next bend. Sorry about the shadows. My lighting's off to the wrong side. I come here and do the next bend on it. All 90 degrees, and it should be a fairly snug fit, but not too tight. After all, this handle's got to go in here as well. And I'm probably going to do that on a kind of notch for the handle to sink in. It looks like from this picture that the, hand, the bar is actually on the side of the handle that has a slit in it. I'm going to use this spot here because it looks crappy. Actually, I'm going to use this one here because it goes off. That's going to be on the inside, so. But first, I'll have to bend this, figure out where it's going to be. And, you can't really tell the alignment of these pins to this bend. 
if you look at the picture here, it looks like that sitting that that way is bent this way. So we'll have to do some little uh, looking around here to see how it goes. Assuming if you look up there, it is. If we go up to this picture, it looks like the nails go down and the handle comes up. So they're like right angles to each other. We also come up to this next picture and we see that the nail should be going down and the handle should be coming up at an angle. And I'm thinking if this handles forward like that, these shoes should be touching. When you think about it, if they're stopping the coach, they're using their foot on that anyway, I believe. But I also think that after this is built, we can probably adjust that. So, I will go ahead and get the bend in there. Go ahead and sand and paint this, finish making these up, and we can come back and see this assembled. Okay, I have the brake handle temporarily in place here. It's not permanent, I just have it tacked in place. These little brackets, I put on top, drilled one hole, stuck a nail in, then drilled the other hole, stuck a nail in, but I didn't seat the nails all the way home. Because we're putting this on right now, for the sole purpose of being able to flip it over. And to get this thing positioned correctly. I'm already doing a test fit and put the wheels on, made sure that where this bracket's ending up, the brakes will end up in about the right spot. Not actually, they go this way. So I need to drill my holes a little bit bigger here for the pins to go through. Do that really quick. If you don't have a set of one, two, three blocks like this, I would recommend you get them. There, I think this set was like twenty dollars off Amazon. Expensive for little metal blocks, but you got to remember these are machinist blocks. They're drilled and tapped for screws in various spots, and they're exactly one inch by two inches by three inches. Hence their name, one, two, three blocks. So. Go ahead and redraw my holes in here so they're the right size. Oh, that one split a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it. So they can always go and super glue it together. With these blocks, I can just set this thing up here. And it's perfect to hold it. So this thing here comes on these pins in the front. There it goes. First one and the second one. So that gives you your brakes here. Break location. Oh. Now I grab one of the wheels, you can see the location's about right. That location's about right. I mean, if you go back, it should go ahead and back a touch, but eh, I'm not going to worry about that. I think it will. So, what that means now, is we can start thinking about putting these brackets in place. Three of them, one each rail, and with this position the way it is now, you're probably going to want to put them towards the back because these aren't touching the wheels and you think about it you put those brakes in place these pads touch the wheels so 
assuming we're all the way forward, I'm going to put those things so just about touching like that. Come in and drill my holes for the nails. Same thing as before. I'm just using a little drill on the pin vise. It's a little bit smaller than the nail itself. And come in. And just like on the brackets in front, you drill one hole. Throw a brad in place. Then you come up and you can drill your second hole. Get this pad straight. My drill is going into the pin vise. If I like that how it goes, then I come and drill the holes for this pad up here. So I'm going to keep doing that on all these and we'll come back and see how it looks. We'll see how those works are showing what I'm doing here, putting these brackets in place. Got two of them in place, then I went ahead and marked, I put one in place, marked a line to square across for the other two. Then I'm just coming in, drilling the hole in one side. And then I'm taking my nails and I'm cutting them off so they're shorter because the nails are five millimeters long and those boards are five millimeters thick. And I really don't want them coming through the other side. So I cut a little bit off the nail, the brad, whatever you want to call it. A little bit more off that one. And I come back, I put a spot of glue here on top. Make sure my brakes are back. Okay. Then I look around and I find where I set my bracket. There it is. Set it in place. Actually, get my nails into the bracket. I keep calling them nails or brads. I come in. I bought them where they should be. Get them started. And I just come back with the tack hammer. Tack them in. Get rid of my excess glue. And I do the other side of them. Same way. And there, all three of the brake brackets are in place. So, they can move around in there. Next thing, I'm going to flip it over. And... What we need to do is supposed to center this up, and you draw a line on either side, and you're gonna make a slit in it to put in these brackets. That'll go nail into the side of the frames here, but they can keep the brake itself from sliding back and forth, so it just slides along the frame itself. It's gonna be hard to show, so I'll get that done and come back and show you the result. So here I have the handle all painted up and coated. I cut a notch in the bottom of the handle for the rod. It's a deviation from the uh, plans. I don't say to do that. Also have the metal brackets bent up. Left a little bit of a peak on one side so as they go on the handle can actually fit underneath it. Something like this. I'll have to go ahead and touch up the handle, then I'll cut all that with uh, um, uh, urethane later. But in the meantime, this all gets glued together. So 
so that becomes one unit now. Something like that, make sure it's straight. Here, I'll go ahead and touch this up, cut it with, with the urethane, and we'll get it installed on the uh, the wagon part of the stagecoach, and see how it looks. Okay, so we have the uh, brake handle, everything put together and coated. The last step on this section is to put it on. It's going to go right here. Two pins. Oh, my light. Sorry about that. Two pins are going to go down into these pieces of wood. It's supposed to be hook shaped. Um, I always have them, have them hook or knock, but then there's brackets going on top. I'll put a hook in them. So they say they're hook shaped. To do that, I'll just take, figure, make sure I'm putting it the right way, figure out how big of a hook to put on them, and go ahead and put it in. These things can fit kind of tight in here. That's fine. I'm not doing a full 90 degree hook just because it doesn't really need it. So this does go in right there. Sits down in the slots I already made with the pre-drilled holes for the nails. And then I can just take the nails and brackets and stick them in. I'm not worried about this moving. Don't care if it moves. It's not like I'm going you know, to play with little tiny horses and have to use the brake or anything. So. Grab out my three brackets with their brads. Three brad. With the breads cut off a little bit because right now they're five millimeter brads and I believe they can stick all the way through a piece of wood and I don't want that. They don't want to have little nails sticking out the bottom. So I usually cut off about a third of the brad. Stick them back in. Once I can see them. I'll tell you these type of visors are just invaluable for an older person like me. I'll stick in one side. Get it started in the hole. And started into the hole. Swing the bracket around. <sighs> Come on. Stick the second one in the hole. Something like that. I'll go ahead and get the other two done and we'll come back to it. Okay, so all three of these brackets are in and brakes are in. It looks pretty good. And with that, 
that gives us the wagon foundation of the stagecoach and the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Next time when we come back, we'll be working on the supports for the, the coach part itself. Brackets that come up and the straps that go across to hold it. In the meantime, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.